you, we last heard from you with the White House. You were involved in this joint effort with some of your competitors to try to bring more testing to this country, which is so desperately needed to reopen the economy. Where are you on this? How, how are you providing more tests? Uh, we're continuing to ramp it up. Uh, at the White House event, we were in six states testing. We're ramping it up to 12 uh, states where we're testing. And one other thing that we announced uh, this week is uh, associates that are eligible going through the CDC uh, guidelines uh, on our own employees, uh, we provide testing as well. And we think it's part of uh, something really important. And obviously, when somebody is uh, a COVID-19 positive, you want them to quarantine. But just for the broader population, are, are you opening these testing sites at Kroger stores across the country? Uh, we Who typically we typically work. Uh, we, we have a we partnership with Microsoft in creating a bot that uses the CDC guidelines in terms of whether you're eligible for the test or not. Uh, the tests are free, and we partner with local state governments and uh, local local and state both in terms of the drive-through facilities. And what we're typically doing is being able to use school space or f uh, fairgrounds, uh, space that's conducive for easy drive-through, uh, but at the same time, uh, it, it's space that's not being utilized today for other means. Are you expanding it? Can you do more? Uh, yes, we continue to expand it uh, every single week. Uh, we are doing it at 30 different locations. And every week, we're working with local states uh, to continue to expand that. And it's something that uh, we're doing our part uh, to be able to get America back to work. Yes. Well, on that front, your, your own workers, I know, have been a priority for you since this crisis, obviously. We heard about a Ralph's outbreak in, in California. Today, there's news that an Amazon warehouse worker has died in New York. How bad is it when it comes to the spread in some of these places where, where people have to go to work, like grocery stores? Well, one of the things, as you know, we're one of the essential workers. And one of the things that we did early on was uh, put in our emergency leave policy. And we ask our associates, if you're feeling ill, don't come to work and reach out to your medical provider. And s safety for our associates, safety for our customers is topmost. And we've done over 20 things in terms of uh, plexiglass protection, physical distancing, reminding, cleaning, uh, and on and on and on, everything that we can do uh, to protect our associates and also protect uh, customers as well. The other thing that we've done is a huge addition of people for our pickup and delivery business. Uh, that business has uh, increased hugely. Uh, obviously, that allows a customer to uh, engage with us and not uh, have to go through the store. Uh, and it's every single thing that we're tr uh, trying to do is to make it easier for somebody to shop with us, safer for somebody to shop and protect our associates at the same time. I mean, it's obviously got to be costing you a ton of money to try to get all of the, this equipment and new procedures in place and pivot the business. We got a taste of that from Amazon's quarter where they actually predict, projected that they won't have a profit because they're spending so much to try to pivot and safely take care of their workers. How, how do you think about that cost and what, what are you telling investors about it? Yeah, on uh, April 1st, we provided updated guidance. And one of the things uh, at that time, we provided guidance on our sales improvements uh, in March was obviously about 30 uh, percent. It continued to be above uh, normal. Uh, on an earnings per share, uh, the prior guidance, we said we were still committed to that. Uh, if you look at uh, cumulatively, uh, we've invested with our associates and in safety over $700 million. Uh, but that uh, estimate was uh, part of what we were considering when we gave guidance before. How else does this change the trajectory for you? I mean, you've obviously got to be dealing with this 24-7 at this point, but what other plans get shifted as a result of this crisis and this huge surge in business you're dealing with and the fact that you've got to stay open? Yeah, one of the things that we did was reduce uh, shopping hours to give our associates uh, some time, uh, downtime, time to relax, uh, more time to keep our stores clean and restock. Uh, we continue to do that. Uh, you know, if you look at permanent changes, I. I certainly believe uh, more people will shop online and do uh, delivery than before. But it was something that uh, over the last several years, we've continued to expand our capacity for that part of the business. 
Uh, one of the things that's kind of a pleasant part of all this, if there can be one, is families coming together as families. And we have tons and tons of stories where uh, people are baking together as a family and they're enjoying it and they're mm -hmm. connecting with their children in ways different than they had before because they were so busy. And people are telling us they plan to keep doing that uh, as things open back up. And for us, being able to support families and help support families coming together is something that's really important to us. What's the status of the hoarding, Th that initial stock up? We saw people rush out and, and buy all their groceries in, in ridiculous amounts. I think you even warned that people should, should just calm down and, and not buy more than they need. Is that still happening or has it completely cooled off as the weeks have gone on? It, it, change, it goes from different parts of the store. So if you look at uh, one of the initial hoarding items is toilet paper. Well, now almost always when you go into one of our stores, you'll be able to find toilet paper. Uh, if you look at uh, baking supplies, obviously a huge increase there. Uh, I was looking the other day, yeast is up over 600% where people are uh, baking. One of the things that uh, this week we've put limits on in many places is some on meat items. Uh, and it's an item yeah. currently, uh, given the news, that people are starting to hoard. And one of the things, that by putting the limit on it, le allows more customers have access to the fresh meats. What's really happening with your meat supply? Are there shortages? Well, if, you, if you're flexible on eating uh, between uh, chicken, pork, and beef, uh, there we constantly have one of those items in, or two of those, and usually three. Uh, we're working with all of our meat suppliers, uh, figuring out how to get products that were diverted to restaurants before to get diverted to our stores. Uh, we're working with new suppliers, uh, and it's one of those things where on a daily basis our teams are working 24-7, uh, finding product and getting it there for our customers. And as long as customers uh, pace themselves and, and don't hoard, uh, we'll be able to get through this fine. Mm -hmm. Well, how long do you think it'll take for these meat plants to come back online where, where you would feel more confident that you have a better supply and you don't have to scramble to get it? Yeah, it, you know, the meat uh, plants, they're, one of the things they're doing is incredibly focused on safety for their employees. Obviously, fighting uh, what's the right physical distancing, how to protect uh, their employees and do it in a, in a way uh, that uh, can still produce product. I know they're starting to add temperature check and a lot of other aspects as well. But the important part is for those uh, plants to be able to protect their employees and uh, do it with testing. Uh, one of the things that we always do is uh, te uh, temperature testing, as an example. Uh, all of those things are por uh, part of uh, important on keeping your people safe and protected. So just to be clear, you have beef or chicken or pork in all of the stores right now. If, if, if every store that I have been in, uh, we almost always have some of all three. Um, every store I've been in, we've had at least two of the three pro uh, types of products. Are prices going up? Well, if you look, one of the things that uh, we've done throughout this is really uh, minimizing the prices uh, that we pass through. Some of our costs have increased more than what we've passed to the customer. The other thing that we're really proud of is we've continued with promotions. Now, we eliminated promotions that incentivized people to stock up big ways, but we've continued every single week, have, a promotion, have our typical promotions out there, trying to help customers stretch their budget every way we can. It was recently announced, I think yesterday, that you were supplying impossible foods in 1,700 of your locations. Do, do you see this as an alternative to real meat at a time where that supply is, is halted, or at least is, there's a hiccup? Well, it ends up being that, but you know, for long periods of time, customers have increasingly been focused on natural and organic product. Uh, if you look at our version of that, of meat items in a simple truth line, we introduced early uh, January. Uh, this is just ongoing. One of the things that customers continue to ask us for is alternatives. And it's a great product that we're able to support the customer. Obviously, in this environment, uh, it'll accelerate their growth as well. Yeah, I was just wondering if this sort of takes them from, you know, the super fast growth more even into the mainstream, given the supply challenges with, with some of the real meat and, and 
how you see that ultimately impacting permanent behavior around things like alternative meat. Yeah, to me, I, I guess I love the comment because everything we see, it's already mainstream for some customers. And you have some customers that only eat meat alternatives. You have other customers that still purchase meat, but for one day a week or two meals a week, they'll p uh, purchase the alternative product. Uh, I think it'll be a huge uh, increase in uh, sustainable volume for them with customers that try it and like it. And that'll be the key. And you know, for us, we're always focused on what's the customer want and how do we provide that uh, at a reasonable price at all times. Rodney, the, the states that have started reopening, which I was talking about, more, more than 20 of them now in some sort of phase, have you seen fewer, less foot traffic at the grocery stores and more as more people are able to leave their homes and go out to restaurants? Yeah, the, the changes in traffic we've seen really hasn't changed, but it's still early on uh, for states reopening. Now, traffic has changed because when people go out, they have, uh, they're buying bigger baskets. And as I mentioned before, uh, customers using our pickup and delivery business as well. And, and that also reduces the number of people coming into the store. So um, it's really early on for the state's reopening, but so far we're really not seeing any trend changes. How do you think about that? I mean, the economic data goes from bad to worse in this country on jobs with today's ADP. We're expecting a very bad unemployment number tomorrow. How do you think about the recession and the deep economic pain people are feeling with the fact that they need to buy groceries and, and stay at home and cook at home. What, what's that going to mean for which products do well and, and how groceries are consumed and bought overall? Yes, so far, the behavior change has been pretty limited. Uh, you know, between the various programs, it, it continues to help people have money coming in uh, between unemployment and some of the other support. So, so far, the changes have been pretty limited. Uh, we certainly believe over time that it will be, people will be uh, more focused in terms of helping their, stretch their budget. And it's one of the things that, uh, you know, we continue with promotions, continue with other things to help people support and stretch their budget. Uh, we do, you know, expect over time, you know, I always say, you know, America will get through this and we'll get through this better than we went in. But it's, it's painful along the journey, and you just feel terrible for people whose families have been directly affected. Uh, but we will get through this. Rodney McMullen will end on that note of optimism. Thank you for joining us with an update. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it.